what's up guys, I'm Ryan Vossery from Rywire and today I wanted to introduce a build that I've been working on for a little bit of time now and that is a Civic hatchback but there's some special stuff with it. It is a full electric dual motor all wheel drive conversion. Not quite finished yet but I wanted to show you guys kind of the process where I'm at, where I've gotten to this point but I'd like to take it back a little bit and I want to tell you a little bit more about like my inspiration on the build and why I'm even doing it. A couple years ago at SEMA, I had the opportunity to actually get a ride in a Von Gitten built car, which was a Mach-E Ford, and it's the 1400 horsepower Mach-E, and it's a full electric, not even Mach-E motors, it's like, it's like big boy stuff, like 800 volt, like super crazy all-wheel drive, purpose-built Ford race car. I got a ride in it, and it was the craziest thing I've ever felt. I've never felt acceleration like that before, the handling, everything about it, I mean, this is a multi, multi million dollar car that Ford put together, and it was a blast to be a passenger in that car. With Vaughn driving it, I was like blown away. I was like, oh my God, like, what does it cost to build something like this? <laughs> So I'm like looking into it and I'm going, I could probably build something that's just a fraction of that performance, but for a fraction of the price. So super grateful to be able to have ridden in that car and it gave me inspiration. I already did one S2000 that's full electric that you guys have probably have seen. And that one was a good groundwork for me to be able to kind of start experimenting and dabbling in the EV world. Kind of just got me thinking, you know, this is the future and it is what it is. And the performance is, is, is rad. So. Having the performance of electric with the platform that I personally enjoy, I think is a really cool merging of those two. I would have never thought 10 years ago that I'd be building a Civic with an electric platform. To introduce you the guys to the car, it is a 99 Honda Civic CX hatchback. I picked it up on an auction site, sight unseen. At the time it was kind of the height of the car market, but I really needed to get myself the Civics that I've always, you know, I feel like they're slipping away, so I wanted to pick up some cars, like just right, you know, so before before you're not gonna be able to find these kind of cars anymore. And I got it on an auction site. It was like 3,200-ish dollars, maybe 34. So I feel like I paid probably at the top, but the car was relatively straight. It was salvaged and had a little bit of a side swipe on the side, but I was able to kind of clean it up a bit. Knew I wanted to do five lugs. With the all wheel drive system that we did, the five lug was a perfect application to actually use the S1 built trailing arm kit. So they offer them in five lugs. So I was like, cool, I can get the five lug done. And then I used some CRV parts to actually make my five lug, kind of call it the poor man's five lug. I just saw the grand vision of the car being like, kind of like a Civic Type R style build. So that EK hatch, Civic Type R feel, gotta have the spoon calipers. Obviously it's not the best condition as far as the paint goes. So we're gonna change the paint and we're gonna do like a Midori color. That's kind of the goal of the car, just to give you guys, you know, like that CTR vibe but a Midori, something that uh, is, is not typical, like a lot of that's kind of a slept on color, but it's a color that I really enjoy. I remember that color when I was younger and like always thinking it's kind of the bastard child color, but it always just like thinking back, they were always my favorite builds with friends that had that color vehicle. That's kind of the final result of this, but I think for design and conceptually, I wanna just prove the concept get it working, recircle back and do the paint and add all the CTR parts. But for now, I wanna just keep it raw and simple and then just really like drive home, make sure that the system that I'm designing in my head actually works. I guess let's start by checking out the front motor. Go ahead and have a look here. actually a Tesla Model S front drive unit and I flipped it around. The reason why I had to flip it is because in a Tesla this thing actually sits where the diff is forward. So the diff back, this is a reverse mounted Tesla front Model S drive unit. That's basically what is living in here. It's about a 300 horsepower motor give or take depending on what the voltage is that you give it and how many amps you can sustain that for etc etc. If you guys aren't familiar with the architecture on these there is a motor on one side, an inverter, because this is actually driven by DC, but this is an AC motor. 
So this AC motor has to transform to DC, and that's what this inverter does. And then the power is delivered by the differential in the back. So the axles are just stubs straight in. So it actually kind of looks like your conventional, like small displacement, you know, two to four cylinder sized engine. So it's got a lot of the normal look to it. There being a gearbox in here, you know, with a single speed, but it has a transmission. It kind of looks like it should live here. Passport actually designed these mount kits for me and for, for them. So this is like a first article sample basically of a Hasport mount kit for this application, for the Tesla drive. And then in the rear of the car, let's take a look back there. So what we ended up doing here is we literally just chopped the whole thing up. So if you can see, it's literally cut from all the way to the back of the car. It's cut all the way forward. And this will all get cleaned up, but you know, this is just like proving the concept right now, right? So <clears throat> there's gonna be, where the gas tank lived, there's gonna be a battery pack there. And then on the floor here, where you can see the skeleton, uh, we'll have another view of what's going on there, but there's actually gonna be um, 16 Tesla modules mounted in here. So there's gonna be eight Tesla modules living on the floor, and there's going to be five living in that box right there. And then we're gonna have a few more in other boxes just stacked just above it. So probably above this motor and then above that box mounted down in the, in the, in the floor there. So a lot of cutting, a lot of gutting on this car. And it's just like, right now it's just trying to get stuff mounted, trying to get stuff to live in the, in the right axle alignments and you know mounting locations and stuff like that. It's very early on on this project, but like we really have a lot done in a pretty short amount of time. My fabricator, Chris, he uh, was able to do a lot of like fabrication structure and him and I designed on CAD a girdle for this motor to actually like live where you could put this technically in the back of an EK, an EG, or a DC2. And there's probably other applications that you could do like a little bit of fabrication and get this like subframe in where you could probably place this motor in a lot of different cars. The front one's cool because it's bolt in. So there's not really any fabrication done there, but doing rear, you really got to start cutting a lot of stuff and figuring out where you're, the architecture for the batteries and stuff like that. What's the replacement of the brake booster? Oh, this right here. So this is the Bosch iBooster. Because there's no engine vacuum with electric motors, you need a way to basically assist the braking so you have that proper pedal feel. And this does that electronically. So what it'll do when you key on and there's 12 volts, it'll actually sense you pressing on the pedal and then it'll assist. So it actually feels great. It's like literally like you can't tell that there's not vacuum from a motor and it's just a little electronic actuator that gives you assist so you don't have a really heavy pedal when braking. Ryan, I have a quick question. So why is there a radiator in an electric car? We get that question all the time and we are using a radiator uh, out of an EG to cool all the components on the vehicle. So there's inverters, motors, batteries, onboard chargers, tons of electronics that need to be cooled down. So our strategy for this is we're just using an EK radiator, CSF right off the shelf more or less, and we are using coolant and fans to divert water to different devices when needed. So we're using advanced engine control systems, power distribution, PDMs, uh, ECUs or VCUs in this case, and we'll be able to take thermocouple or temperatures on all these devices. And then we'll be able to strategize where we need cooling to be sent. And I'm gonna do that with these three way valves to divert the water to the different components, but still using one radiator. Along with that, we're also using an AC. So our AC system is gonna use Freon and it's gonna go through a heat exchanger 
and then it's gonna basically zap cold our coolant. So cooling with the air conditioning and then cooling with the radiator with air and a fan, we're going to basically tag team the system to cool our motors, inverters, batteries, all these things is super critical that we keep it all very cool. So on this car, I actually decided to use an EG rack. And the reason I did that is one, because it bolts right into an EK, but it also gives me a lot more clearance for my differential. And then another really important thing is that for these mount kits, we actually are trying to make them so they can fit in an EK, an EG, and a DC2. So all those cross compatibility and the real main difference between the EK and the EG slash DC2 is that rear subframe. So changing that out, running the rack from the EG and all the components from the EG, now we're able to make this mount kit work in all three platforms all across the board. So this is the bottom of the car and you actually see there's a lot going on here. So some really cool things to kind of point out is this is an off the shelf S1 built trailing arm system. And this is what single handedly is going to allow me to easily convert to all wheel drive. So this trailing arm setup is like I said, a, a something that's just off the shelf that you can order and it allows for an axle to be ran through this trailing arm system. And obviously it's really cool. It's all tab and slot boxed in. Looks like, you know, like some trophy truck stuff going on right there. So that's really cool. And then on top of that, I had the forethought and I knew that the EK LCAs are a bit longer than the EG. And I started thinking, you know, it's going to be easy to convert to an EG. You'll get about, you, you save about an inch. So uh, I knew that it was going to start to encroach into this design because this design was like really like in my head before we even started, you know, bending and, and shaping and forming any like CAD or any metal. And so I knew the best way to start was to just grab lower control arms from the EG. So I instantly went with the S1 built trailing arm, the ASR rear lower arm from the EG. And then we started to design this cradle for the actual Tesla drive unit. So this Tesla drive unit is another 300 horsepower. So if you guys didn't catch it earlier, I told you that the front was 300. Well, this rear one is also 300. So you're talking approximately 600 horsepower, all wheel drive with 85 kilowatt battery pack, which is like gonna give me crazy range, awesome power. Uh, this car is gonna be able to, honestly, like you could probably drift this car too if you wanted to. Uh, it's going to be wild. That inspiration from that, the 1400 Mach-E, I mean, that thing, like, it's really starting to come together now and you can see where the big picture is going. So this rear subframe was 3D CAD design with Chris Eimer. And Chris and I basically, I had the idea in my head and he was able to execute this onto the computer for me. So this can be a repeatable part. And what this technically is here is just a metal subframe is tab and slot design with a bunch of with a bunch of flat pieces of metal it's laser cut and then with tab and slot and then welding you can see that everything just kind of fits together like kind of like a lego kit and then you just have to weld everything up we wanted to keep it as bolt in as possible so what that kind of means is that you have to weld in plates before you can then bolt them to the chassis so what we did here is there's like a big flange plate that's actually welded to the frame rail. Another piece that's then bolted to the flange that we welded in. This little mount on this side is just a custom made little bracket that's just welded straight to the chassis. For that, that's just, this is just like a little supporting mount. There's not a whole lot of load. It's just kind of holding up the motor on the side there. The main mounts are gonna be your rear mount and then there's a front mount on the other side. 
and these big tubes are supporting all this flat stock steel that's all tab and slotted together is acting as a structure that ties this rear mount to this front mount on this side. So the next part of this puzzle is actually mounting batteries. And as I showed you guys before, there was that big metal box that actually holds five modules and that giant box is gonna be mounted right here. This is where the gas tank kind of like lived and then where the, you know, under the seats, the back seats of the car lived. And we just went ahead and just cut that whole section out and I'm gonna fit a five module battery box right here. Couple more modules on top of that, leading into our eight module floor area. So, you know, you guys see a lot of the electric cars are built like skateboards. And what they do is they have this design where these, all the battery packs are kind of on the bottom and then they have motors and, and drive wheels in kind of the shape of a skateboard. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of take that formula because it works really well. It keeps the center of gravity of your weight really low. And as you guys know, the lower that you can keep your weight, the better the car's gonna handle. So that was really important to me that I had everything kind of like lower weight balance as possible. So really just like cutting the floor out of the car just seemed like the uh, best option. When you're trying to cram like honestly like a thousand, 800 to a thousand pounds of battery into a tiny little car with dual motors, there's not a lot of real estate on the vehicle at all. So you really need to try to do your best to be resourceful and put things where you wouldn't expect to see. And that's in this case, it's gonna be um, under the seats of the car. This structure was the design that Chris and I came up with. It's super simple, it's nothing overly engineered, and it's literally just frame rails where my battery modules will lay right on top. So the way that the batteries are designed, there's these little metal lips on the side, and that's where the weight is. So you literally can lay them right on the edges of this. So there'll be one, two, and then a total of eight. So there's gonna be all these modules living and they go right up to about right here. So I can put a flat metal sheet. I'll just probably end up tapping all this and putting a big piece of metal or carbon fiber or some kind of a plate that I could adhere to the bottom. So water and you know no, no kind of debris can get in there, but it'll still be like a sealed up floor. And it'll also create a flat bottom opportunity for me so that way it'll increase aero. Um, it'll be, you know, a flat bottom car is always gonna like handle good, better with, you know, the patch of air under the car being more minimal. Um, it's gonna keep the stance and everything grounded best possible. So weight being down and a flat floor is gonna increase this, the handling of characteristics of this car like substantially. So that's why we're, we're doing it this way. <laughs> guys so hope you enjoyed our first video of our ek all-wheel drive ev project hopefully we will be able to do more of these so tune in next time when we have a new video for you peace